and cleared my account, my money is still on hold. So, Shell, I don't want no more of your gas. Amen. In other words, I expect to get what I pay for and you take what I got and don't get nothing extra. Listen, don't be holding my money. You already got your money. What you holding my money for? Let my money go. So, I'm, in other words, I expect to get what I pay for. I'm redeeming my money. God expect to get what he paid for. God gave us a mind. God gave us the Holy Ghost. God put us in our right mind. He said, I expect you to operate for me. So find out what the will of the Lord is. Not what your will. God said, if I ain't getting what I paid for, you think I made y'all to run around here to serve the devil? I don't make my money for shale to hold it until they feel like releasing it. God said, I did not make y'all to serve the devil. I made y'all to serve me. And when y'all think serving the devil is more important than serving me, then you see, you are not finding out what I want. And when you don't find out what I want, I don't need you. I don't need that gas. Because chances are I ain't none of them no better than the other one. That's just a sale tactic. Hallelujah. But one thing for sure, Jesus is a lot better than Satan. I didn't experience Satan. I experienced Satan for 28 years. I've only experienced God. Sabrina, remind me today, today is my spiritual birthday. I'm officially 23 years old in the Lord. I think I got the Holy Ghost right around this time, 1 o'clock or something like that. Maybe a little earlier, but I'm officially 23 years old. Listen, 23 years with God, 24, 28 years with the devil, and I can guarantee you it's better serving God than it is serving the devil. Guaranteed. Hallelujah. Find out what the will of the Lord is. That's why Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, thine will be done. Come on. We read verse 5, didn't we? Verse 6, what he say? He said, what? Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Oh, hallelujah. As loud as I'm talking, y'all know my speech is seasoned with grace right now. Because I'm showing you what you're doing wrong, and I'm showing you how to fix what you're doing. Listen, see, y'all think grace is I'm going to let you run over me, and I ain't going to never correct you. I'm going to let you run over me, and I'm always correct you. I'm going to always let you run over me, and I'm always correct you. And I'm going to season it with salt. Salt meaning that every time I open my mouth, you're going to love what I say, even when you don't want to hear what I got to say. Listen, hallelujah. When you're talking about seasoned with salt, salt meaning, he said salt will put a flavor on something that it's going to taste good see y'all young folk won't eat with no salt us old folks like me we sometimes we can't have no salt run our blood pressure up so we got to put that salt aside but y'all saying i gotta have some salt gotta have some salt put some salt on it put some salt on it in other words make it taste good i'm trying to show you something here god say listen if you don't try to say the things of god everything you say ain't gonna never mean nothing because it ain't seasoned with salt. It, ain't, it, it don't have the right ingredient to be helpful to somebody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know why you can't say things with salt on it that you may ought to answer every man? It's because you don't know what the will of the Lord is. So when somebody asks you something, you give them a carnal answer. You give them the answer that the devil wants them to have. But if you take time to find out what the will of the Lord is, you will say what God wants them to hear. But you don't know how to do that. Because you don't know the will of the Lord. Go back to Ephesians. You got to know the will of the Lord. You got to know how to answer people right. Amen. Listen, your right ain't God right. Well, I don't want to tell folk they going to hell. That's all the Bible tell you. By the Bible so 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 spe so specific in telling you to go you going to hell. It tells you you already should have been there. But by the mercy and the grace of God. He said, I'm giving you more time. God said, I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In other words, I could really kill every human right now and send them to hell and I'll be justified. But God said, I'm not willing to do that. I'm willing to give you time to find out what is it that I want. But y'all don't want to do that either. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Again, what was the verse? Uh, what verse were we reading? 15 through 17? Verse 16 said what? Redeeming the time. Back in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 said what? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Listen, don't y'all know days? It's getting worse and worse out there. Y'all know? They got homosexuals on billboards not looking at each other, acting like they're asking for a date. That's sick, man. 
That's sickening. Hallelujah. Men with men. That's evil. Making it a law they can get married. Making it a law that I that you got to put it in school where my kids have to find out there's an alternative lifestyle. You know, I, listen, I don't need the devil to tell me, to tell my kids there is an alternative lifestyle. I already know that you can be holy or you can be an evil person. Now he just determined what kind of evil person you want to be. And then they're going to say that we are prejudiced against homosexual. Listen, homosexual is not a race. It's a lifestyle. Hallelujah. In that case, then you're prejudiced against gangbangers. That's a lifestyle. That ain't no race. Hallelujah. In that case, you're prejudiced against uh, 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 prostitutes. That ain't no race. I'm trying to show y'all the days are evil. Folks are making evil good and good evil. God said, don't y'all think y'all better get it right? God say, how long did I put up with Solomon and Gomorrah? God say, and I had Abraham to negotiate terms how I'm going to destroy it or, or, or why would I destroy it? He said, but at the end I had to let I had to destroy it because he couldn't win the negotiation. God say, redeem the time. Don't y'all know I told you that evil shall get worse and worse and men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Backbiters, haters of God. Oh, hallelujah. And God said, I'm telling y'all, time is winding up and y'all still think you got time to get right? Where you get that from? Redeem the time. Find out what do I want. But you won't do that. You're still trying to figure out what you want. Listen, let me tell every human in here what you want. Make your flesh feel good. That's what you want. Now, you can itemize it, but when you get through, if your flesh don't feel good, you don't want it. Amen? Amen. The reason you go eat what you eat is because your flesh says, I want a good greasy burger. You know it ain't good for you, but you want it. And then you got to go pop some medicine because you got a bunch of side effect from eating that nasty burger. But you wanted it. And you'll do it again. Because you wanted it. Amen. You understand? Oh, hallelujah. But you can't do that for Jesus Christ. Listen, that burger is going to go in your mouth and your stomach and go through your intestine and come out your rear end. You understand? But one thing about serving God, it can get in you and it'll stay in you. It, oh, hallelujah. It'll grow in you. It'll make you better. Listen, listen, listen. It's time to redeem the time. What can I do to serve God right? Redeem the time. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back up now. And still in chapter 5. I want to go verse 6. You got it? Read. Let no man deceive you with what? Don't let nobody tell you a bunch of words that don't mean nothing. Listen, stop letting folk preach to you to tell you that God wants to prosper you. God wants you to have a bunch of junk. That's a bunch of vain words. You ain't going to ever find that in the Bible. You're going to find where they can twist the scripture and make it seem like, but you ain't going to ever find that. Because <coughs> it ain't in the Bible. You can't, that's vain words. But you can find that God say I ought to send you to hell. You can find that God say I'm going to send you to hell. You can find what God said you might not make it into heaven. You can find what God say if you don't live right, I'm going to send you to hell. You can find out what God say if you don't repent, I'm going to send you. You can find all them scriptures and a, hot, and a whole lot more. Don't let nobody deceive you with vain words. And what else he said? Because these things cometh up the wrath of God upon the children of who? Now, I told you, wrath is a calculated destruction that God has prepared for individuals. See, we think wrath is a respond. Or, he, or should I say a quick respond? No, wrath is I make plans on how I'm going to get rid of you. Did it ever occur to you? Did it ever occur to you that hell, that hell was made as a preparation for people? God thought about it. God said, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. I made this earth and I made it real good. I gave everybody everything they could possibly want. Possibly want. Anything could come up in your mind, I put it here for you. He said, but then y'all have the nerve to tell me what you're not going to do. So God said, now what can I do with these folks? I, I, I like the word he used over in Hebrew, profane. 
Profane meaning, I'm telling God, I don't want what you got. Keep your, it ain't worth nothing. It ain't that important. It, I, I don't value it that much. That's, pro, that's what profane means. So God got to thinking. Now he didn't say this in the Bible. This is John talking. I'm just telling you about how I would do it. If, if, if I gave my children everything they wanted, I would say now, they done told me, Daddy, you stink. I don't want nothing you got. Don't offer me nothing. Uncle, how can I punish them? So they'll never forget that they didn't want nothing I have to give them. God said, what kind of torment? What's the worst torment? Now I want you to think for a second. What's the worst torment that any human can have? A broke leg ain't that bad. You can get, you can get used to pain, can't you? You can get used to just about every kind of pain that comes upon you. Cancer patients deal with pain. People that have... A uh, uh, lung problem deal with pain. The worst pain for any human to deal with is remembering when they messed up and they can't go back and fix it. Yes. Think about all the mistakes you made and it still bother you to this day because you can't go back and fix them. As long as you don't remember them, they don't bother you. But as soon as they come up in your mind, it's like it knocks the wind out you all over. Like, man, I can't do nothing about it. You know? And then, see, and that's what drove some of us to drinking and drugs and sex and murdering. And, uh, because we couldn't solve them things we couldn't go back and fix. So God said, what can I do to these people? Hallelujah. That ain't in me. I'm going to make sure they never forget who they turn their back on. That's why the Bible said, when the man, when the rich man went to hell, he said, remember. He never said, I'm in the, he never said he's in flame first. The first thing came out of him, remember. Remember. When you were doing good, you didn't want to have nothing to do with God. Now you want God to send somebody to put some water on your tongue. No, your burning ain't the worst problem you got. Listen, hell is being out of the presence of God, knowing you had an opportunity to do right, and you can't go back and fix it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God say, y'all don't want to redeem the time. Don't you know there's going to come a day when I'm going to put you in a situation where you're going to be able to see me. You're going know me and know I'm a loving God but I won't help you out of your misery because you turn your back on me Amen. redeem the time y'all now is the time for you to pay attention to God and stop letting folk give you these enticing words come on verse 7 he said what well, be not ye therefore partakers with them with them that means don't hang around them come on verse 8 he said for what for ye were sometime but now are ye light in the Lord. Listen, when we low down at one time, let, let, me, let me invent a word, low down her. Because you still low down. You were just worse. <laughs> Don't you think you're a little better now? A little, little better, huh? You ought to be. But God said you can get better. You can get better. Redeem the time. In other words, find out what is it that God wants from you and work hard towards accomplishing what God wants and not what you want. Come on. Next verse. He said what? Nine. For the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable. Proving what is acceptable unto. Not what's acceptable to President Obama. Not what's acceptable to President, uh, uh, I mean uh, the, 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 the Pope. Not what's acceptable unto you, but what's acceptable unto God. Amen. Care what no judge say if it goes against what God said. I don't care what nobody say if it goes against what God said. I'm not trying to make you happy. I'm trying to do what is right by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You got to get that in your head. You can't get that in your head. You're going to have a problem. It had Jesus worried about Caesar... Had Jesus worried about uh, 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 Pontius Pilate? Had Jesus worried about the crowd? Who was it? Saul worried about the people, didn't he? Caused him his kingship. Well, Lord told Samuel, I feared the people. God said, I done gave y'all enough example that when you go the wrong way, what's going to happen? I feared the people. 
Lot stayed down in Solomon and Gabara. And the Bible tells you that his spirit was vexed because he hung out among those heathen. The Bible tells you that you can't walk together unless you agree. Hallelujah. Do you think God is lying? God, I'm telling y'all, the only way you're going to survive over here and please me, you got to come out from among people that don't think like you. Now, let's pray that you think right like according to God. But uh, no matter how you, listen, I can't hang around gangbangers even before I got saved because I don't think like them. I, don't never want, I ain't never want to sell no drugs. I didn't never want to go around beating nobody up. I didn't never want to sit around and talk about how bad I was. So we don't think alike. So wh why would I want to be in a gang? Hallelujah. I never felt bad by not having a daddy. Because see, they get in the game, well, we all don't have a daddy. I'll be, I don't feel bad by not having a daddy. Now, I, I tell you what I did, like hanging around with people that we, 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 we call ourselves playboys. Now, I hang around a bunch of playboys because we all thinking alike. We trying to get a woman. I, I ain't trying to beat nobody up. I'm not going around trying to write on somebody's bill and try to show how bad I am because you ain't bad. You sneaking around in the middle of the night doing something, but you bad. That ain't bad to me doing it in the public. Showing around. I didn't want to hang around nobody that carried a gun to prove they were bad. If you bad, put the gun down, brother. Let's fight fist to fist. You ain't bad. You just know how to pull a trigger. You ain't smart enough to do that. Because you're missing all the time. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to show you, if you don't agree on something, how you going to walk together? So just because you say you know Jesus Christ and you want to do things to make you happy, and I say I know Jesus Christ, listen, we ain't walking together. Because my God tell me I can't do a whole lot of things. And your God say you can. You say you got Jesus. I say you got Jesus. Well, I tell you what, I take my Jesus. And you can keep your Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 11, he said, What? And have no fellowship. That's a wait, whoa, whoa. That's a key word. Have no fellowship with the what? Unfruitful. 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 I grew up in the South. Sometimes we go to a, a pecan tree. Pecan for all of y'all that don't know what I'm saying. We, we, go, we go to a puck on tree. Sometimes that, that, that tree be loaded with them. And then we'll, we'll throw them rods up there. And them, you know, them, them puck on go to falling down. And the first thing we would do is eat a few of them. If the, if the few we ate didn't taste good, we'll walk away from that tree. No, that, that something ain't right about that tree. They always have a funny flavor or, or even they were big. And we, see, we, we knew when they should be ripe and they ain't ripe. But it, 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 it's got a bunch of fruit on it on there. Listen, fruit, just because you see a bunch of people at a location, don't mean that fruit or good fruit. That just means there's a bunch of folks in there that's acting like a pecan, but they're not. There's a bunch of folks acting like they're saints, but they're not. Hallelujah. That's why I tell y'all we are not Christian. Christians are phony saints. I say it again. When you call yourself a Christian, you a phony saint. I'm a saint. I ain't no Christian. So you got to go back and find out what that word really meant. Listen, Jesus is a saint. Paul called me a saint. I'm going to call me a saint. I'm not going to change the word because some man came along and called me a Christian. I ain't no Christian. I'm a saint. Jesus was not Christ-like. Jesus was God. Jesus was not trying to be perfect. Jesus was perfect. A Christian is a person trying to be perfect. Listen, I'm a saint. I'm perfect. Do I have problems according to your understanding and my understanding? Yes, I do. But see, here's the problem. Saint meaning God said, I sanctified you when I gave you my spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. I'm showing you trying to, listen, the will of the Lord is for you to be a saint. Live perfect in this present world. God said you can do it. You know why y'all fail to do it? Because you don't know the will of the Lord. You think the will of the Lord is for you to have a good fleshly time on this earth. 
That is not the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is to seek and save that which was lost. That's what God is all about. God is all about us getting saved, going out, finding somebody else that's not saved and help them get saved. That's why he said you got to have your speech seasoned with salt so when you without, you can say the right thing to get them in. Listen, you don't need to get a person in that's already in so you don't have to be as nice even though you should be. You don't have to watch what you say because by now you should know I'm only going to say what's going to help you but I got to make sure sure when I say it out to the sinner I can convince them find out oh hallelujah oh I'm having fun y'all I'm enjoying myself come on what verse we stopped at 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather but rather but y'all hang around folk that ain't right in the mind of God and y'all have fun with them I don't have fun with sinners. Five, ten minutes, maybe. And after that, I got to let you know, man. You know, why don't you come on to church? Ah, oh, oh, boy, you know. All right. Why you don't never come visit me? I tell you what. When, when, they, when they ask Jesus a question, Jesus said, I tell you what, let me ask you a question. So my question to you, you say, I won't come visit you. Why you won't come visit me? I want you at my house. I want you at my house. You know what I'm saying? This house. You ain't got to come to my house. Whatever I can give you at where I live, I can give it to you right here in the church. Better yet, I can give you more right here. I can give you something that'll last a lifetime here. It won't last a lifetime if I give it to you at my house. I can give you some barbecue chicken. And after that, that chicken going to come out. But if I can tell you how to live right, hallelujah. If I can tell you how to serve God, if I can tell you how to stop your lying and your cussing and your stealing and your whoremonger, listen, I'm giving you something that's going to last you a lifetime. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm not going to hang around folk with unfruitful works. I'm going to hang around them just long enough to reprove them. In other words, correct them. But folk don't want to be corrected, do they? Some of y'all sitting up in here don't want to be corrected today. Come on. Verse 12, he said what? For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them. Some of y'all done done some things y'all ain't going to never tell nobody. You ain't going to never utter it out your mouth. God made me uh, 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 tell y'all about how I, how I hit my first wife. When I told y'all that. Wednesday. Y'all saw how I paused, didn't you? I'm going, wait, wait a minute, Lord. Now, we ain't got to go there, do we? God said, tell her, but, but wait, tell them. I didn't beat her every day. <laughs> I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to make it sound like that. <laughs> when I, well, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, only when I got drunk. When that oil got in my system. Made me act a complete idiot. It kind of like... I, I, I've learned to look at, Brother Beverly, I've learned to look at drugs and alcohol like an evil Holy Ghost. Amen. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it's like a, and I ain't comparing it with God, but I'm just saying, when you get that spirit in you, yeah. it'll make you act a complete idiot. But when you get the Holy Ghost in you, It'll make, oh, hallelujah. What does it make you act like? It goes the total opposite, don't it? The alcohol and the drug made me want to fight and do evil things. The Holy Ghost that Jesus gave me made me want to love and put up with evil. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Man, I wish y'all could get it. Listen, the Holy Ghost I love folk that hate my gut. But that whiskey made me want to bust you in your mouth when you hated my gut. Oh, the Holy Ghost made me want to give all my money up. But that old whiskey made me want to keep my money in my own pocket. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost made me want to be in the house of God. But that old whiskey and dope made me want to be in the club switching, trying to find a trying to find a woman. Oh, I'm trying to tell you, listen, it's something about that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Something about that Holy Ghost. That whiskey. That whiskey get down in your system and make you do some stupid low down dumb stuff. The Holy Ghost get down in your system and make you do stuff that seem to be dumb. Because we still trying to figure out how can I love an enemy that's going to end up loving me. We ain't, we ain't used to that yet. But we finding out it works. Oh, Hallelujah. I really believe, I really believe being high made me cool. You know that? And I, and I tell you this day, it worked. 
Because when I got high, my brain said I'm cool and I could get any woman that I wanted. Some took longer than others, but I always got them. It's evil. Why? Why did the evil work? Because evil tap into evil. In other words, she's just as evil as I am. And the devil making us link up because them demons talking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it's the same concept with the Holy Ghost. Listen, that's why he tell you, why would you want to hang around somebody? Listen, why would I want to hang around another woman that's trying to get me in bed? Let me put a get around a woman that ain't trying to get me in bed. Let the two Holy Ghosts get together and keep both of us acting right. Because huh? when them two demons got together, Together, they act like they wanted to act. Why can't we get two Holy Ghost filled people in the same room and still be holy and be righteous and do the right? Why are you all oh, hallelujah? Why you gotta be saved and acting like a sinner? You know why? Because you don't know what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is for me to treat everybody right, male or female, homosexual or straight. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. I'm, 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 oh, as long as I'm on camera, I guess I got time. What verse we stopped at? 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest. Listen, the preaching you get in the day is a design to show you that what you're doing is wrong. Now, I know you got your iPhones and your Blackberries and, and all of them different phones you got. I know you got them all. Listen, I'm not saying take them back unless the Holy Ghost tell you, but I'm just saying stop. Just stop. Redeem the time. We done messed up in a whole lot of areas. We can't go back and fix some of them. The only thing we can do is just come and confess and repent and say, Lord, get me right. But after today, stop. Redeem the time. Now put your emphasis, put your money, put your time, put your effort, put your work, put your everything into serving God. Because he say, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Love the Lord. So put everything you got into serving God. Stop putting it in yourself. Amen. We done messed up. We can't fix that now. Don't go back trying to say what I'm going to do. Just say what I'm going to start doing as of today. I am going to redeem the time from now on everything I do is geared toward pleasing God Lord what is your will what is it that you want me to do I'm going to repent today I'm going to get it off my back but from now on Lord God hallelujah I want to please you from now on Lord God I want to serve you from now on Lord God help me to redeem the time help me Help me to make the best of what I can do now. Listen, I may not have a five year, two year, one year. Help me to do it all towards serving you. Don't let me waste another minute on myself. I don't want to waste another minute on myself. Lord, I don't want to waste another minute on John. I want to waste every time, every second I got on what can I do to please. So what is it? What is your will, Lord? What is it that you want me to do? Help me to redeem the time. The light, the light is helping me see today. So I can see, John, you've been messing up. John, you're messing up. Why you keep messing up? You ought to know better by now. You see, it doesn't get you anywhere. Hallelujah. Come on. We got to finish it up. Verse 14, he said, what? Wherefore, he said, awake thou that sleepest. All of y'all that's sitting around sleep. Get up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. He don't mean physically see. He mean wake up. Get yourself straight. Get your head right. Come on. Get your head right. You know you've been a fool. You know it don't make no sense for you to be running around trying to buy every gadget that come on the market. You know that. How many of y'all got phones sitting in your house in the corner in baskets and stuff that you done bought? And really ain't nothing wrong with the phone. You just wanted another one. I mean, how, how much clothes you got sitting around you can't wear? Shoes you can't wear? How many TVs you got in every in your house and you ain't watching none of them? You barely turn on one of them. Come on. You, you done bought enough junk now. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on. Get yourself together. Arise. Ain't that what he say? Awake out of thou sleep. And what? And arise and get up from the dead and Christ shall give thee life. Get up, get up, get up. Wake up and God said, I'm going to straighten you up. That's right. Hallelujah. You ever, you know when you wake up in the morning, at night. You know how you be sleeping real good at night. Somebody turn on that light. Wake you up, don't you be? Why you got that light on? 
and they keep it on long enough, it literally will wake you all the way up, won't it? And it'll be hard to get back to sleep from a light. Just from a light. Hallelujah. Pull the cover over your head, but you can still see that light through that, through that cover. I don't care how much you try to ignore what you've heard today. The light is still shining on you. Right. You, know, you hear what I'm saying? The light is still on you. Ain't nobody looking at it but you. Don't worry about what nobody else is looking at. They, they being blinded by the same light. Amen. Some of y'all done pulled the cover over your head a little bit. Some of y'all done pulled it off. Some of y'all done set up. And God said, I want all of y'all to set up and wake up and listen to me. Wake up. Get up out your sleep. Pull the cover from off your head. Stop sitting around in darkness thinking what's good, something going to change. Listen, your change is today. Redeem the time.